What's good? What's good? Savage Drive in the motherfucking building, man. Savage Drive in the building, man. Y'all go to www.com OG Hollywood Speaks and get that Savage Drive, man, because y'all already know it. Take a savage to survive out here in this flatland. You got to have a drive to get to where you going, man. Welcome to the day room, man, where everything go. Where everything go in that square business, man. Make sure you step in the day room with your fucking mental, because if not, you will go to sleep thinking about what happened today, and that shit might carry over into tomorrow. It's kind of like Freddy Cooper, Nightmare on Elm Street, if you drive in the wrong way. But like I say, we back up in this bitch like a G-string, man. And it's LA to Texas. Once again, shout out to the motherfucking Texas Raiders for doing the Texas thing, man. Bring the trophy back home. It was 50 something, it was 500 something thousand a day out there, man. So salute to the Rangers, man. However, man, still a Texas thing, man. Like I say, we got 5 3 cartoon in the building tonight, man. Cartoon come ready to give his spiel, man. Just like everybody else came to the day room to get a spiel, man. So he's here to give his spiel, tell his time spent in whatever system he was in. I don't know. But we know one thing, I don't save nobody in the day room. It's every man for themselves, right? And, and it's gonna be like that until this motherfucker closed again. But like I say, welcome to the day room. At the end of the show, I'm quite sure, man, cartoon answer any question you wanna ask him, cause he ain't running from no smoke, man. Welcome to the day room, man. Hey man, can, can they hear me? CEO, fuck up the audio in the building, man. Ask the chat, can they hear me, man? Look, man, if you're in the chat, you can hear a CEO fuck up the audio, man. Again, what you always give him, and that's a warning, man. Put a warning in the warning chat if you can hear me. What, what, hey, man, where my people at? Miss Mocha Bird, can y'all hear me? Type one in the chat. Y'all know I fuck up the audio, cuz. I'm going to fuck up the audio. That's just what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't know nothing about this shit, and I'll be talking and cussing. And y'all won't hear a bitch ass thing. But God <laughs> heard me, cause he know I meant it, nigga. Hell is you talking about? Yeah. Say, man. What's up, OG, man? How your day went today, man? Oh, man, you know it's always good, man. Everything is good on my end of the field, man. Cause guess what? When you measure up that shit I went through, this shit out here can't be nothing but good, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. 500,000 was in the building today out there in Arlington, man. Showed up, hung out, salute the Rangers, did our thing, man. Guess what? It's day room time, man. And that's what hey, that is, hey, man. Hey, hey, OG, what you think about that Tyson Fury fight, man? You saw that shit? Yeah, I seen it. What you mean what I think about it? Man, did he lose or did he win? Man, that nigga whooped Tyson Fury. Nigga, what the hell is you oh. talking about? Last time I checked, what the ref say? What the who say? What the ref say? Oh, that's some bull. Listen, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> yeah, they look. They didn't raise a bunch of niggas' hands that lost. It, it's a whole bunch of niggas got their hand raised and they lost, nigga. Say, Fuck man, the look, ref. Look, like I said, as long as the motherfucker ref say he wanted to fight, he wanted to fight. It don't matter what the motherfucker on the outside of the ring talking about. And that's real. Man, man fuck the ref. They cheated, cuz. Well, I'm from the old school. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying to win. It's the only honest motherfuckers that lose all the time. Oh, see, you, yeah. I told y'all OG Hollywood is a cunt man. Now, let, let me get this right. This nigga OG Hollywood always been a cunt man. He ain't been nothing else in his life but a cunt man. Listen, and he good at it. This one of them niggas that good at it. Them ain't them bullshit cunt men. This one of them ones that's good at it, nigga. I done seen this nigga choke a guard out over some money I, now how the fuck you choke an employee out he let you choke him out and he don't go get you up yeah this nigga he a con man like a motherfucker man y'all don't believe this nigga at all man say yeah. all i all i gotta say about that man is it's all about leverage man you got to have leverage on the situation the reason why he didn't turn me in because i had leverage in that situation See, first things ain't no robbery. There ain't no rules in that shit. When you take my shit and you don't come through, 
you suffer the consequences and repercussions, right? And on right. that day, on that day, it required a little bit of WWE. Same thing like I say right now. I didn't come off the top rope, man. I just applied a little bit of pressure to that neck, man. And, and, and uh, it got some straightened, man. And that's facts, man. Okay, so explain that. Why you choke the law man out? And how you get in a situation where you got to choke out a law man? Because everybody ain't been to jail and everybody don't understand that. You in here with a life sentence and you is choking a staff member out and he is he accepts the choking out and it's business as usual. Help me understand. Just explain that situation for us. For one, anytime you're in a position, man, where it's money being transacted from from my hand to his hand, it's no different from the streets. When he don't come through, he got to pay it one way or another, man. And that was my message to him. It don't matter where we at, man. You owe, you going to pay that. On this date, he deserved the choking, so that's what I did, man. I choked him out, and I didn't have to worry about that no more. On that next break, he paid what he owed. Simple as that. Now, how I did it, penitentiary rules are always in effect, and they in effect right now, so I got to keep that close to my vest. Nah, fuck that. I'm getting him on the show. <laughs> I'm getting him on the show. What, what that nigga name? Andrew? I'm getting him on the show. Fuck that man. nigga name is old school Porter. He was missing motherfucking three fingers. Yeah, old school Porter. Yeah. And he was out of motherfucking fifth war, and the nigga used to smoke crack in my cell. Yeah, I listen, I'm getting that nigga on the show, nigga. Yeah, we ain't we ain't doing that one side shit. We ain't, ain't doing that one side it. shit. Just hear what I said. The nigga was smoking crack in my cell. The nigga was putting it on there and bringing it back in my cell with, with the crack pipe, with the choke in my cell. If I'm holding it down for you and you smoking crack in my cell, you're going to take anything that I give your motherfucking ass. And on that day, he deserved to choke it. Simple as that. Yeah, well, man, we're going to leave that on pause till we bring that nigga up here. You is a cunt, man, and that shit is one-sided. Yeah, you done did some bullshit. You done threatened to kill a man, mama. You done got pictures of his family or something. You done did some real conniving ass, West Dallas ass shit to make that nigga not tell. All yeah. that smoking crack in the cell, I understand that. But nah, nigga, you, you goddamn choked out the law and he ain't give you up, nigga. That was some bullshit. Hey, man, all I got to do is say this up, man. I ain't never choked a man that didn't deserve to be choked. And on that day, he deserved to be choked. Facts. And that's simple as that. Well, listen, man. Tonight, man, we got we got California in the building, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to say I don't know. This might not be the first time California been in the building, but it's the first time I've been on the show and we've been able to ask some questions from somebody that's from the turf, as they say, or somebody that's from the land, right? What, what do I mean by the land? I mean gang land. I mean the motherland. I mean Los Angeles, South Central California, where all this shit started at, right? And we get to get him on the show today. And, you know, as you say, he get to give his spiel. So what's some of the things you looking forward to out this conversation, OG? Well, man, you know what, though, man? Uh, you know, I've been around a lot of gang members in my lifetime, some from all around the world, right? And I know they all got their different different perspective on what banging is, right? So I'm looking to ask those questions, what's the difference from being, from banging in Texas than banging in LA? I need to know that first. And another thing I need to know is where did it all start at? You know, cause I didn't hear, I didn't hear motherfuckers say that they was in a, they was in a crib neighborhood the Crips put them down. They didn't get jumped in. All they did was get put down, right? I didn't hear that story too. Right. So I want to know the whole spiel on what's the proper protocol for getting in this shit and getting out of it. And like I said, this is just one person's spiel, and we all got opinions, man. I might get a motherfucker up here next week that bang and, and write the and write the book a different way, right? But today we gonna get it this way right here, man. So. Uh, 
What's your spiel on it? What you trying to find out? Man, what you mean? How a nigga got in it and how a nigga got out of it? Well, I ain't understand. Now, that part is real easy. Yeah, a nigga got his ass kicked. And when the shit got too deep, nigga tried to swim out of it. Some niggas ain't make it to land. Some niggas did make it to land. Yeah, that's how that shit went on this end. No, cause I done seen it. I, I done seen it play out different when we was when you know when when I was in that institution. Uh, right. Some motherfucker said they wanted to exit stage left, right? And the motherfucker said, "Well, the only way you get out from here is you get life flighted." And where I'm from, life flighted means they need to break your plate at home. You had some niggas that was so serious about that shit. Ain't no jumping out. Only way you gonna get out is you get killed out. Right. So that's why I say it's different with different people. So, uh, but we gonna get a uh, we gonna get the spill on this shit tonight, man. Like I said, man, for those that just tapping in, man, welcome to the day room, man. Welcome to the day room, man. And that's real, man. But uh, yeah, yeah, I gotta put these headphones in, man, so it don't be too much um um echoing going on, man. So man, cartoon, like I said, cartoon, man, uh, cartoon in the chat, man. He say he's trying to hit the link, man. Let let let, let me see him, homie, the link. Yeah, send the link, man. He's supposed to be on this side of the fence, man. What he doing over there? He might have to get DP. <laughs> might they... line, line that shit up. Yeah, man. I'm gonna ask him about that Crip Max shit too, man. Nigga got lined up out there, man. As they say in the Crip world, nigga, you ain't in here. You gonna get DP when I catch up with you? Whatever that shit, man. Yeah, motherfucking disciplinary, man. Y'all hit that like button, man. Y'all in the chat, man, hit that like button. I don't know what y'all do on CEO channel, but don't come over here and don't hit no motherfucking like button. I don't know what y'all do over there, but when you come over here, hit the like button, man. That's disrespectful, man. It's just like speaking when you come to the house. Hit the like button, though. It's just like sitting at my table eating and getting up and walking off. I ain't going to have none of that shit, man. We're a little bit more discipline over here, man. Hit the like button and we roll. This is the day room, man. And that's for real. In the building. Foundation Nation is in the building, man. He just showed up, man. So we're going to bring him on, man, and see what he got to say, man. We'll bring him on and see what he got to say, man. But in the meantime, between time, man, like I said, man, Welcome to this badass day room, man. The hottest show on the set, man. The oh, hottest no, hold show on. on the set. OG, can you still hear me? You know I fucks up the audio. You in there, man, like a G string, man. Okay, we in there. It's all good, man. We got cartoon, the homie cartoon and pulled up. People are here in the show to check them out. You you told them to hit that like button. Did they hit the like button? And don't talk about my people on here, cuz. Hey man, man look, about my people. look, 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 look. First of all, let, let, let's get this shit straight. That's one thing you can't do. You ain't gonna tell me what to say. <laughs> now, why you wore all that blue? You ain't from nobody set, nigga. Why you on here? Yeah, why you ain't wear that red, nigga? Don't be coming up here cripping all of I just realized. Don't be coming up here cripping all of a sudden trying to match and shit, nigga. You ain't from that set, nigga. I respect what's in the day room. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can I I I can master energy, nigga. It's a whole bunch of shit you don't know. Okay, How well look. That? You should have wore a ski mask cuz you and the guest known for robbing motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. both of y'all got life sentences for robbing people. So you should have wore a ski mask and not the goddamn blue jacket, nigga. What I'm to, back back in my day, nigga, there were no masks. Nigga, you went in as is, nigga. It was I <laughs> already understood when you showed up. The people already knew what you come to get. Ain't yeah. nobody playing. Yeah. We are you already knew when we show up, hand it off. That's that new shit. Put a mask on and go in trying to hide and all that shit. That shit didn't go with us. We already knew what time it is. And when we come in, you knew what time it was too. Right. It's on it's on the two ways out of this shit. Get the money up or suffer the consequences and repercussions. And I don't think nobody wants the consequences. Everybody wants to go home at night. So don't try to protect what's yours. That ain't yours. Right. So listen, we got OG Cartoon in the back, man. And we finna bring the homie up and we finna get the show cracking. We 20 minutes in and we on time, man. So let's do, let's take care of this business, man, and get this business done. OG, what's good? Oh, what's up, cuz? You all right? 
Yeah, we good, man. That's what's up, homie. Hey, man, welcome to the day room. That's right. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you, man. Glad to be here. Yeah, thank man. We, we we got you in the building. I got a quick question for you. Have Come you ever been me. to Texas before? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got a, I got a, um, I got a sister that live in Fort Worth. I got two cousins that live in Dallas. Um, I got my son live in Houston. Oh well, shit, man, you 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 Texas connected then? Right. I just I just left Texas about let's see, uh, about four five months ago. I was in um I was in Dallas in uh, Fort Worth, uh, for a family reunion. All right. Well, listen, man, it's OG Hollywood. Go on, holler at him, OG. What's up, five three? What's, What's good? Going on? What's up, homie? Glad to meet you, man. Same to you, man. Like I said, man, you already know when you come to the day room, man. I don't know if you ever been in no Texas prison, but all prisons sometimes run the same, right? The day room is the day room, right? right. Uh, only motherfuckers that's going to show up and not blow up the ones come, come to the day room. Everybody come to the day room ain't real. We recognize that too, right? Right. It, uh, because a lot of shit go on in the day room. So when a motherfucker ain't real, they stay in the house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, no, that's real. That's the only way I can give it. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. And we all know that everybody go down that road ain't real. You know what I'm saying? And it's a lot of motherfuckers stay in the house when when the real shit get ready to go down. Even some of the real ones, if we can agree. Right. You know what I'm saying? But uh, once again, man, like the CEO said, man, welcome to the day room, man. That's what's up, homie. So uh, yeah, man, yeah, he say um, you you say you been checking us out, man. Yeah, oh yeah, man. Uh, I I've been um, I say for about uh, let's see, uh, at least at least three months now, man. You know, uh, probably a little, probably my it might be a little bit longer than that, man. I've been um, I've been I've been you know what I'm saying dipping in here, dipping in there. You know what I'm saying. It's a lot of stuff going down, oh, in Texas right now on this YouTube world. So I keep my ear to the ground, you know. Right, right. Plus you got family, man. Well, listen, man. Time is the most valuable thing we have, man, and we ain't gonna waste your time, man. We appreciate you catching that day room, you know what I'm saying? Catching them doles when they roll, cause like OG Hollywood say, a lot of people can't come over here, but there's a lot of people that just won't step in the day room. You know, some right. people get invites and they won't come out. You, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. So I just wanna appreciate you for stepping into the day room. Uh, 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 appreciate you for appreciating the content, right? And you know, let's see if we can add some value to these people life, right? And um, you know, just showing this this um Texas to goddamn Cali connection, man. So give a brief introduction for the people in the day room that don't know who you from. I mean, who you are and where you from. Okay, man. Uh man, I'm you know, I'm cart I'm cartoon one, man. I'm from uh East Side Avalon Gangster Crib, fifty third street, man, born and raised in South Central LA. Um, you know, uh done did a whole lot of time man I'm almost 40 years behind them walls man i'm 59 now and um i'm just that, that shoot that's basically about it homie you know what i'm saying with that prison life that white life that street life man you know what i'm saying been doing like you know all of us trying to make ends meet trying to make it work you know right right okay that, that's a good segue man so we're gonna kind of switch questions me and og hollywood and some 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 questions may lead to questions right so this how we gonna start it off man you spoke on ya right and for people that's in texas for the listeners out here ya is tyc here in texas is called the um texas um youth commission right um and california is called ya what does ya stand for youth authority yes uh really uh the real name is cya california youth authority california youth authority okay so we got um tyc they got CYA, which they abbreviate to YA, man. So uh, give us a little background, man. What first, how old you was, and what led you to end up in YA in, in the first place? Oh man, my um my first trip to YA was like I got I got locked up for a robbery in in our hood, and that was like seventy nine, like the late late seventy nine. End up getting popped for that. Going to you know I'm going to juvenile hall end up catching uh what they call Y life which is a seven year term in Y. um right by by 1980 i landed in YA and and just started doing my time homie yeah so 
That, that's kind of like similar here where you saying you in there till you 21, basically. That's what the seven years amounted to? Well, that's what that's what they give you. You don't really have to do it. If they give you what they call wide life, they're going to give you seven years, but you don't, you don't do but two years off of it. Because I, I, uh, I hit Y in 80, and I got out in 1982. Okay, I got you. Yo, yo, shot, OG. Hollywood. So let me ask this cartoon, man, because I know everybody, you know, everybody asks this, this type of question different, right? Short-term, long-term goals of joining that Avalon Crip game. Short-term learned. Uh, well, that's that would be something I would say. I would I, I can answer it from what I have now as far as short term or long term goals go. But now as a kid, when I first got involved with gang activity, I didn't have no goals, period. Wasn't looking for no goals. Didn't you know what I'm saying? Didn't know nothing about no goals. All I know, it was a rite of passage. You know, you coming up in the set. You live here. You from here. And um, couldn't wait to start banging. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, all, all, the, all the kids I went to elementary school with, they brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles was from the set. So, you know, as as little kids. We, you know, that's all we would talk about. Man, I'm glad I get old enough, man. I get jumped on. I get jumped in. I get quartered in. So, you know, when we, we got to a certain age and the big homies were like, cuz y'all ready, y'all ready. We like, yeah, homie, we ready. Shoot, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to get out. So as far as goals go, we didn't really have none in, homie. We was taking it day by day, just doing what we do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they, you know, in, in, in Kelly, they, you know, other people, they, it might be a pastime, but in in la and cali homie it's our culture you know what i'm saying it's our, it's our heritage it's our culture it you can't you you can't do nothing in la and the red and the blue is not involved in it i don't care if it's rapping money making dope selling whatever you do crippling and blood is going to be involved with it because because it is our culture it, it's what we come up under you know what i'm saying and right. even before the crippling and the blood started we had already had other gangs in la so we, we just migrated over to that and just kept it going. But as far now as short term, long term, um, the short term, I wouldn't really, I'm just really doing my thing, homie. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I own a security service in Alabama and I'm doing this YouTube thing. So I want that to blow up. But long term, you know what I'm saying? I can only say that I'm just trying to make sure that me and my wife and my family really don't need for nothing. Man, I was talking to a cat today and um he had offered me sixty thousand for my book and i told him i said no homie that ain't enough you know i ain't gonna do it like that and um you know i guess he spoke with his people spoke with his people and they came back they say look man you know we've been checking out your you know your youtube channel checking out this your story because my youtube channel is basically my life that's an autobiography i'm just putting my stories that that i happened in my life onto the youtube and so they cut they bumped it up to like a hundred racks now and that just that just happened today so now right. what i gotta do now is just sit down get that pen and that paper and start writing right hey hey congratulations on that man uh, um real quick man you know that's good man that's that's the best thing this shit gotta equal goddamn some money or equal something i got another question man we kind of jump forward but tell us um how you join the Crips or joined your neighborhood gang? Was it because you was there? Did you get jumped in when you went to YA? Was you already on the set? Um, so forth like that. Kind of give us a rundown of that. What what generation, right, are you? Were you in the first generation, the second generation, or the third generation? And did you go to YA already on the set? Or did that happen once you got in the YA? Okay. As far, okay, as far as, um, let me speak on that because I tell people all the time I'm from the third generation, but okay. now there, when it comes to, when you come to speaking on generations, nothing's written in stone because each, you know, all these different sets that's in LA, they came out at different times. And the generation is whatever your set is. Now say like if, if your set came out at the beginning, you go from there, but now you got sets that came out in the late seventies. You got sets that came out in the 1980s. You got some sets that came out in the 90s. So, of course, they generational differences would be different. As far as me, from my set, I'm from one of the oldest sets in L.A. Um, and I'm, I'm what you call the third generation. Our first generation from my set was the Avalon Crips. And then my, the second generation was the homies who started Five Trey, the Five Trey Avalon Crips. Right. And I came right behind them. Right. 
Uh, and as far as um, like in in, in L.A.'s man in them seventies back then at that time, like I say, banging was a rite of passage. It, it, you know, it was a thing. If you live here, you from here. What no right. such thing as you gonna live here and run up down the streets every day and you know the homies gonna see you and what gonna put you on the set because you was gonna get pressed all the time. What's up, cuz? You know when you ready to start banging? And if you was on some man, I don't, you know I want to play basketball. I don't really want to. No, no, no. You, they was gonna pack you out. They was gonna jump you and tell you right then and there, okay, you from the set now. So if, if you done got whooped for it, you might as well start banging. And so. That's how that went. Then you had, a, but you had a lot of us that couldn't wait. You know what I'm saying? Here we are, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten. We come outside, go in the park, we up and down the street. We see older homies standing around, g'd up. You know what I'm saying? Doing what they do, and those were the heroes of the neighborhood. Those who we admired, and we like, dang, one day I'm gonna be just like him. We, I remember, um, me and my little crew, about seven or eight of us, we would all pick older homies that we wanted to model ourselves after, like, I'm going to be like him, I'm going to be like him, I'm going to be like him. And right. so, you know, we just waited until, you know what I'm saying, we was old enough. And usually back then at that time, it was going to always be between the age of 12 and 14. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you you know, you, you one day when you pick it, you come in the park, you come in the hood, wherever you got going on, and you let the homies know, man, what's up, man, I'm ready to do this. they like, you ready, little homie? Yeah, I'm ready. They're going to put them hands on you. Okay, um, so at, at what, what age did you hit that park and catch that fade? I started banging when I was late 12 going into 13. 13, so what park was it? It wasn't St. Andrews, huh? Because I know that's no. a trait. No, yeah. no, no, that's on the west side. I'm an east sider, homie. I'm from South okay. Park, one of the biggest parks in L.A. Okay, what? Well, oh, South Park is where y'all got it on at. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yo, shot hot OG, Hollywood. So let me ask this. So you 12, 13... When you got put on the set, right? Mm -hmm. So, what was it like when you went to school? What was it like uh, when you went to school? Before or after? Okay, we'll go before. What was it like for Cartoon going to school before he got put on the set? Uh, shoot, nothing but a regular day. You know, uh, me and all my little partners that we ran with. You know what I'm saying? We was run, we would run around and we was climbing the hood before we got put on it. You know what I'm saying? Right, you know, writing stuff on the wall with markers and you know what I'm saying, <coughs> claiming it like we was righteous, you know, legit, but we hadn't got put on yet. And uh that I mean that consist, you know, that 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 was every day, you know. Um, until the day came when we really got put on. So as far as, you know, really wasn't nothing, you know, every day what kids do, you know, 10, 11, 12, just running around, you know what I'm saying, buying our time till the homies recognized us and said, Come on, it's time. That's well. So now, now you got put on, and you going to school. What changed? A whole lot. Um, <laughs> a whole lot, man. You okay now? You 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 walk different. You walking different. You talking different. You looking different. You feeling different. You acting different. You know, as a young kid, now it's in your mind. Oh shoot, I am official. I'm really from the set now. You know what I'm saying? So, um. You trying to, you know, you trying to be tough. You trying to have a certain type of swag. You know, the little girls, they they noticing a little difference. So you like, oh, you from a gang now? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm whoop whoop wham. So uh, now here come the, you know, you picking fights with the bloods. If 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 is if is any at the school you at, um, and you just going through the motions of trying to make sure that your homies recognize you. They see you. You know what I'm saying? You doing every little thing. You might be a young kid, but now. You want to go put work in. So at back then, during my time, you know, it was usually with the shotguns. And so, you know, uh, homies, if they, you know, they feeling you, they like, come on, little homie, get in. You know, you in the car, homies doing drive-bys, you in the car, you looking. You know, I'm like, you want to bust? Yeah. You know, they putting the towel across the back window. So when you pull, you know, bust the gauge, it won't, yeah. you know, hit too hard or do yeah. something. And you doing some. Uh, they give you your first joint. They give you your first, you know, drink. And you just, you know, you just happy to be around. You hanging out, little kid, sucking up all they talking about, all that. So now you at school, you you know, you tough. Uh, now this is when you're starting to get kicked out of school. You're fighting. You don't want to go to class. You want to hang with the homies. You want to roam the hallways. You want to do all this. So now all this comes. So you got you got a, 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 a straight path to either getting sent to continuation school. Continuation school is when you... You get kicked out so many different schools in LA. They send you to uh, alternative continuation school. 
The next step after that is juvenile hall, which we weren't tripping anyway, because during my time, the mentality was, oh, I can't wait to go because you want to go up in there and show sure enough, get your gang bang on now, right. you know? Right, right, man. Uh, so uh, let, let's get into the, the actual history, right, of, of the whole Crip thing, right, for us as out-of-towners. I actually been, been to L.A. a bunch of times. I actually just recently lived there for six months in 2001, right? So I understand the, the culture. I understand how it was engraved into the lifestyle and things like that. But I would honestly say, right, being out here from Texas, right, and me, and me, me personally, me personally, being introduced to Crippin' or gang lifestyle through, like, colors, right, or seeing the movie Colors and seeing this for the first time. I never saw a Crip prior to Colors, right, and seeing my neighborhood eventually getting turned to Crips, right, as, you know, the drug game starts spreading more and people from L.A. start showing up and things like this, right, and then me, myself, getting put on the set and things like that, right. This what I didn't know about it back then that I know now about it or, that, or the way that I perceive it now. Back then, for us, if if you was a crip, it, it encompassed everything with the blue flag, right? It's like, hey, we crips and we ride with crips in the discussion, right? It, it's not until me going to L.A. and me being around people and being around a culture that I understand that the whole crip thing was like a, a adjective to describe what kind of gangster you was versus us being like, all crips because i'm like well hey how did niggas start banging against each other well they like hey back then it was old school gangs old school gangsters and we people didn't want to be labeled whatever that other you know the old way the new way is the crip way and we crips and so amongst the youngsters it kind of just spread it in that manner so now that i'm old i say damn so now i see why it was more in y'all area the set versus the color I, I i don't i don't know if i'm making sense there i'm trying to understand it okay so so my question is is how did it go from being just a crip thing right let's say like a raymond washington creating the crips to it being and you you might not have this answer right this not a this not something you may be able to answer right but this may be something you could give a little context to right because you much older i'm 45 you 59 right I'm saying at the inception of it being a crip thing on the east side, right? How did it transform to so many different sets and so many an animosity amongst just, you know, okay. how, how did the brotherhood go? I got you. I, yeah, I got in, in you. other I got cities, you. in other cities, when you get to Alabama, where the culture isn't there, right? Or uh, in Texas, we all crips. You, you, am I making yeah, sense? No, I, I know. Yeah, no, especially I'm in the that for you. All I'm right, gonna answer that for you, cause I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, uh, I had a I had a um conversation earlier today with one of my partners. He in Texas right now. You know what I'm saying? And um, we was talking along that lines. But okay, you okay? Look, from '69 to '79, you had pure, unadulterated cripping. You know what I'm saying? No matter what part of LA you, were, if you throw that C up. You was accepted by the other Crips. Um, it started on the east side. Raymond Washington started on the east side. And then he took it to the west side. Now, I'm finna, I'm finna enlighten a lot of people to something that uh, some people might, you know, want to get upset about. Like, no, 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 no. You hear a lot of people on YouTube. You hear a lot of people on TV say that, uh, like, Big Tookie was a co-founder of Crip. Took wasn't no co-founder of Crip. No. Raymond, when he started it on the east side with his partners, after a year or two, he took it to the west side and gave it to Took and all of them over there. And they took it and ran with it. Now, they, yeah, he did help. He was very influential and spread it on the west and side. Growing it, and growing it. And growing it. it. But when you say a co-founder, that means you was there when the, of the inception of it and you helped form it and make it. No, Took didn't do that. Raymond and his crew did that on the east side and then put it on the west side and it spread it like that. Um, right. So now once it starts spreading, it starts spreading, it starts spreading. 
around, it was just, at the beginning, it was just East Side Crip and West Side Crip. Okay, around 70, 71, you had a set on East Side, came out called Castle Crip. They played out. Then right behind them, you had you had the Avalon, my set, the Avalons and the Kitchens, cute 102s, you know what I'm saying? Dudes start taking it upon themselves to say, okay, we want to put our own name on our section. We were, we all live here. We want to be called this. We all live there. We want to be called this. So that's when that's when the name giving start giving. So once you see these cats over here start calling themselves whatever they was, they be like, well, shoot, homie, we gonna call ourselves this, this, this over here. And it went to the west side, <clears throat> and they start doing the same thing. Boom, 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 boom. So now it was all good at one time. Uh, 1979. Everything went bad, homie. It, uh, that's when, uh, you know, every, I mean, everything went bad. You know, Ray, Raymond ended up getting killed. Took ended up going to prison. Um, that's when the A Tray Gangsters and the Six O's fell out. That when that war started, it was pretty much the beginning of the end of what we knew as Crip before it ended. But even before the A Tray Gangsters and the Sixties fell out, you had the Five Who's Broadways and the Four Trays fall out. Uh, right. and, their, and, and they fell out before they trades in the 6 old, but it wasn't talked about because they sets wasn't, <clears throat> it wasn't blasted like that. But now I when the A-Trey Gangsters in the 60s did, they think it went worldwide. And that same year, you had the 107 Hoovers and the 9 O's, which were, they were Hoovers at the time. 9 O's was Hoovers first. The 9 O Hoovers and the 107 Hoovers, they went to war. So all that happened. They war started, the four trades and the Broadway started. The six O's and the gangsters started. Raymond get killed, took, go to prison. All that happened in 1979. It was like the, that year was the beginning of the end for what we knew as Crip. As and Crip. from that point, and from that point on, it just started getting worse and worse and worse. Based on the fact that with the six O's and the gangsters having they beef, uh, it it was just a natural progression. Seth Star choosing sides. I'm riding with the A Trace. Well, I'm riding with the six O's. And slowly but surely, it starts splitting L.A. down the middle. Um, it took a long time for it to get to where it is now because now, basically, you have the gangster car and you have the in-hood car. Right. Then you have, and you have the Hoovers, which they turn criminals. Um, you have another smaller section, uh, the mafia car, stuff like that. Right. But, yeah, um, now, and, 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 and what's cold about it, what's messed up about it is, I tell people, Crips are Crips' worst enemy to date. You know what right. I'm saying? Since in the last 20, 25 years, Crips have been Crip that they have been their biggest enemy. Um, you got Crip sets, they will jump over their hereditary uh blood set that they've been beefing with since the beginning of this thing. They they are ignoring them just to go past them and get at their enemy Crip set. That's just how much Crips don't like each other. How that was turn, one of the things. How much turmoil it is. Well, what, right. what you got, OG Hollywood? Oh, what I want to know, man, is this here, man. Uh, I want to go back to when you said they would give you the shotgun and put the work in, right? So when the work get put in and you officially in, right, when do you come time for you to put somebody down? Uh, when you When you get older, and you build up your status, you build up your name. Um, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, as you say, put them down per se on your own. Um, you might have a partner that that you know from another area, and you might be in his ear, like, man, come on over here, man, man, join my set, man, go on, get quartered on, woo, 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 woo. And you know, you little kids, so you know, he might be like, man, you you want me to be like, yeah. And what you what we did back then, you would bring him to the set. And tell the other homies, like, look, cuz, hey, man, this such and such is my partner, man. You know, he live on such and such. He want to be from the set. And so the homies be like, oh, is that right? Like, yeah. Okay, well, he got to get out. And there, and they go from there. They're like, you want to bang from the set, homie? You're like, yeah. Okay. They'll put him in that circle and go ahead and put them hands on him. And after that, you know what I'm saying? He in. Yeah, he, he get out. Okay, so real quick. I just want you to break this down for me real real quick. What set does your car align with now? I'm out the gangster car. I'm from Avalon Gangster. We out the gangster car. Okay, y'all in the gangster car. So that's also with the trays, right? Yeah, uh yeah, with the with the trays. Um anything 
because the, the number ain't really gonna make a difference. But like anything that got a gangster in their name, you know what I'm saying? As long as they right. you could be such and such, such and such gangster crip, you in the gangster car. I got you. I got you. All right, man. We're gonna we gonna keep it moving, man. Keep it moving on, man. We're gonna get to um we gonna get to doing prison time, man. Let's talk a little bit about the prison time because you did a bunch of time in YA. You get out of YA. Um, how long is it after you out of YA that you end up in the in actually California State Prison? And what's the first prison you went to as an uh, adult? I got out of YA, and when I got out of YA, I stayed out a month and a half and came right back and went to prison. Went to the county jail. You know, in our county jail, you got the crypt module. You know what I'm saying? 4800, 4700. And from there, went straight to uh, went straight to uh, San Quentin. But now... A lot of people say, San Quentin, I wasn't behind the, at my first term, I really wasn't behind the wall like that. You had another unit called H unit. Um, I got, I got a, I took a deal for a year county lead, but now I wasn't even a county lead. I just took a year. No, I took a deal for 16 months. Now in Cali at that time, 16 months, you're going to do um, eight months, 20 days. Um, or you could just do what they call a county jail lid. Man, the county jail is so unhealthy and nasty. I told, I told, I, I, I look, man, I'm not staying in this county jail. Go ahead and send me to prison. So my my lawyer was like, well, you know what I'm saying? You go to prison, you're gonna have a record and you're gonna have to um, you know, get take more time. I'm like, well, you know, that's what she she told me, well, well, they'll give you 16 months. I'm like, okay, if I get 16 months in the pen and I go and I'm gonna go do eight months, 20 days, or I stay in the county jail for the eight months. I mean, go on, go on, send me to prison, and that was my first bid. I went, I went there, got out again, stayed. Uh, I stayed about two months, and went back and showing up, star bidding in. Oh, okay, I got it. Before you go to your question, Hollywood, let's ask him this: What's going on in this picture right here? Uh, let me see. I had just got out of prison. I've been out of prison about two hours. Man, that's my that's my road dog. Man, that's that's my heart, my other half, man. That's Mr. Crazy Ray. He AIP right now. I had been home about oh, maybe maybe about 30 minutes and Cuz found out I was when he, he knew I was out, he came to the house. My baby mama was the one who took that picture. Right. I I I I OG, what you got? So I noticed you said module, right? Uh I mean, I never heard of that until you said it now. Of course, I'm not from L.A., right? Uh, I'm Texas bound. But go ahead and explain to the people what that means and what could a person expect when he go to the module. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the word module is just used for another word for saying your unit, whatever unit you're in. They just, you know, call it a module. Um, the module I was in was the crypt module, 4800, 4700. I went to 4800 first. And then we eventually opened up 4700 and I ended up over there. Uh, 4700 and 4800 was the crip module. The police had to make that module because LA County had so many crips in it running around. The homies was wrecking shop, tearing stuff up. You you got you got to look. You got thousands of crips, young wild dudes that's off the chain, beating up white boys, beating up maskins, beating up bloods, beating up any and everything that they can get their paws on. So the police was like, man, look, we need to put these dudes in a certain area where if they want to beat up something, they can't do nothing but beat up they self. 4800 was born. Uh, 4800 was born about 1984. So anyway, uh, they, every, when you get popped, you a crip, you was going up in there. So now here it is. You got a, uh, you got a unit. You got 13 cells up. You got 13, was it 12 cells or 13? Anyway, you got 12 or 13 up. You got 12 or 13 down. The cells up top held four people, but they put six in there. You had two day room, you had two floor sleepers. The cells downstairs held six people with two floor sleepers. So you got six people up in the top cells. You got eight people downstairs. Um, and you just in there, homie. You know you, and when you got all these crypts, you can't come in there, snitch jacket, a buster, a mark, a hoe, anything. When you get caught up in that crypt module, you gonna be down for your grits and gravy, or you was gonna get tested, beat up. Uh, I ain't gonna, and I ain't gonna sugarcoat it. You, you had some fools in there might rape you, and all that. So you know, if you came up in there and you wasn't down for your crown, you know what I'm saying? You punk in the game. You got to stand on your ten toes. 
if you in a cell, you might be in a cell upstairs with a, with like seven, eight cribs from a different set. But now you got other homies in there, but not in a cell with you. You might get in an argument over the cards, candy bar or whatever, and it's right. time to get out. And you don't want to get out because you scared. Man, dude's finna get on the bar like, hey, woo, woo, hey, man, your homie up here punking the game. Man, this fool's a straight up mark. What are you doing? Yeah. Woo, 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 such, such, won't, and he won't, and, you know, they, they, hey, y'all can have it. They'll throw you to the dogs. And boy, hey, look, you seen a bad day then, homie. Hey, I, hey I was just finna ask you that, Cartoon. I heard about the Crip module through YouTube, right? Uh, probably the homie Kev Mac videos or something like that. But uh, give us your worst day in the Crip module, man. Give, give us cartoon worst day in the crib model, whether, whether it was something you experienced or whether it's something you watched go on. What was your worst day in 4,800? If you could just sit back and remember like, man, this shit fucked up, but this is what it is. I would say, I would say it would have had to have been when, I, when, we, when they put us next door, when they, cause it was so many crips, they couldn't fit no more of us in 4,800. That's when they end up opening up 4,700. Um, so the police came one day with a clipboard and they was telling all the sets that's going next door, such and such y'all going woo, woo, woo. And they calling out sets. If they call your set, go ahead and pack your stuff. You're going next door to 4,700. Uh, okay. When we got, we got next door to 4,700, it was about, it was about, uh, you, I would say between 14 to 17, nine O's already over there. They couldn't put the nine O's in 4,800 because it was too many eight trade gangsters and too many hoovers. Uh, that had been a bad deal for them. So they put them next door in 4700. So when we end up opening up 4700, all these crips came over. So we was over there, I say, for about a month, maybe a month and a half. And the nine O's got into it with the Watts car. So a lot of times you got, it's the Watts car. But now, even though a lot of sets in Watts, Compton, South Central, whatever, they might beef on the streets. But now everybody knows strength in numbers. So when you come to jail, you put that to the side. Now we the Watts car. And at that time, the watch car might have been 50 deep, but they end up getting into it with the nine O's. And um, they end up when the, when the doors wrecked, it was a big old ride. You know what I'm saying? Um, it wasn't out. It was about me and about four more. It's about five Avalons up there. You know, I got all my homies in the corner. I'm like, cuz, man, let's get up against the wall. We ain't got nothing to do with it. So other sets getting out the way and they, they bumping upstairs, downstairs, coming over the tier, down the back stairs. They doing their thing to the riot squad, the police was able to get in and break it up. But uh, we had been on lockdown. We had been on, we had been on lockdown for about a month, man. No visits, no nothing. Couldn't do nothing. And um, no sooner as we was gearing to come off lockdown, uh, who can, I mean, the Venice show lines got into it. If I can remember right, I think the Venice show lines got into it with the Harlem's. And now here we here it is. We on lockdown even longer. That was about, that was about the worst thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey Hollywood, hey. Hollywood. Tell them tell them what we call that shit in Texas prison. Week one day one. Nigga ain't no coming up. Ain't no coming up. Week one day one man. Week, week one day one. Tune so in our situations, we go on lockdown and we got to go through the lockdown program. And, and and the minute we fuck up on the program, they put slips under our door that say week one day one say you start over so you know every every two days we get week one day one i don't think i ever went through a lockdown where we completed the the program have you hollywood never never <laughs> i think they just never. gave up and, and, and end up um letting us up on, on, on y'all lockdowns cartoons do 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 y'all do y'all eat meals or do y'all get fed johnny sandwiches a johnny sandwich in texas is a goddamn me two pieces of bread with a tab of peanut butter you, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, you talk in in the prison system, in the prison system or county jail. When y'all go on lockdown, do they feed y'all sandwiches? For us, they feed right, us yeah. sandwiches. If we on if we in the county jail, if we on lockdown, yeah, you finna get you finna get them what we call court line sandwiches. You, know what I mean? <laughs> you finna get a cookie. You finna get a cookie, <laughs> an apple, uh, two <laughs> slices of bread with one piece of bologna on it, and two slices of bread with a little peanut butter on it. Yeah. You finna so, ride out. <laughs> you That's gotta it. rock out, man. Like but now said. in the in the prison system, you know the doors got slapped. You know they got what they call the tray hole. The tray holes cut in them, and um, the police they gonna bring them hot carts. They gonna push them hot carts to your unit, and they gonna feed you like that for a minute. Uh, if right. it's too if it's too if if it's if it was too wild at the beginning, 
you're going to start out, yeah, getting them sack lunches and all that. But now they're going to start bringing you your hot meals. And like uh, lockdown, if it's racially motivated, you're going to do you're going to start out with about two weeks. I'm talking about that. And that's at the minimum. You're going to you, you being in you ain't coming out for at least two weeks at the minimum. Right. But like uh, depending on what it's going to be, because if it's racially motivated, as soon as the gates rack it's going down again. So we go we end up doing, you know, what I'm saying three, four months anyway, all the time. So, you know, it is what it is. So let, let me ask this cartoon, uh, because like I say, the, the the day room down here is set up different, right? It's set up segregated, right? So uh, as far as being in your day room, as far as the gangs and all that, right? How is it set up? Um, it depends. Okay. It, first off, it's going to depend on what prison you're in. Some prisons, a lot of prisons, you ain't finna even get no day room time. That's what come <laughs> well, here. Ain't, ain't no such thing as day room. You in that cell. <laughs> but that, now, that's, that's, that's that like, That's that well, shoe no, that's shit on, that's in pop, No, that's in population. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, and uh, that's why they sell, they sell you TVs. You have a TV in your cell. They sell you a hot plate. Cause you know, ain't no day room time and all that. Now, you know what I'm saying? Now, uh, uh-uh. get in that cell. Cause blacks and Mexicans cutting the food 24 seven with each other. But, um, for the spots that did have day rooms, uh, the, you, everybody you got, okay. You got, you got the crip car, you got the blood car. Uh, you got, you got the BGFs. Um, then you're going to have what's called others. That's like the races. That's like races. Anything that's, that's not black, white, or Mexican. You know what I'm saying? Samoans, Asians, all that. They call others. They kick it together. Then you got the Southern Mexicans from Southern California. You got the Northern Mexicans from Northern California. Then you got the white boys. Um, everything is segregated. Everything. There's no such thing as going in a cell with somebody that's not of your race. You you gonna you got you got to they gonna always put you in a cell with a black with a black, white with a white, Mexican with a Mexican, or whatever. And um, and that's how everything is uh like in, on the iron pile, the iron pile is segregated. You got the black part, the white part, the Mexican part. Um, we don't we don't play no games that can bl- that can bring um, body, bodily contact. It's non-contact. Now we'll play handball against the Mexicans every now and then, but like basketball, football, anything, anything where you can hit, they don't play that. It's none of that. No, 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 none of that. No talking. No, no, none of that. And a lot of times we're not gonna eat behind each other. We not finna drink behind each other. We not finna smoke behind each other. Not finna do any of that. Uh, California prison system is probably one of the most racially segregated prisons you gonna ever go to. Right. Okay. I, I got a question. Out here in Texas, right? The gang shit kicked off for us in the '90s, man. It got real out of control early '90s. I mean, pr- pretty much the rest of the nation. Mm-hmm. Not only Texas, but the, but the rest of the nation, pretty much, right? And Texas was one of the first hotbeds, you know, to adopt that 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 gang culture with cities like Fort Worth, right, kicking things off. Um, cities like San Antonio kicking things off. Cities, you know, like that, right? That that really adopted it early on in the late '80s, early '90s. Out here, we run what we call a chicken system. When you come through the door, now I'm talking about prison, right? So so when you come through the door, if you say you're a crip, right? We ask what's set, right? And then it's a chicken process go on, right? Depending on what set and what city you from, same way like California. But I, I guess, you know, and, and back then in Northern California, you, you didn't have the, the crip element like that coming out the North back then. So uh, out here, it is segregated first from North Texas, South Texas, right? Okay, that's the Houston. That's the Dallas. And, and, and we're just going to relate it as cars, even though here we don't say cars, we say cities, right? Mm-hmm. So you got the Dallas car, you got the Houston car. And then amongst that, you got what set you from, right? But we run checking sessions the minute you hit the door when I was in the system, right? Especially if you rep the set. If you didn't rep a set, because, you know, we in a state where everybody didn't gangbang like OG Hollywood. He, you know, he's a real G, a real gangster, but... He wasn't with the Crip and Blood thing. You understand right, what right. I'm saying? So the people that didn't rep sets, we call neutrons, right? In my day. So it's like, oh, he a neutron. 
he, Hollywood will laugh at that shit and say, yeah, <laughs> you niggas the dumb. No, Hollywood like, fuck y'all niggas talking about you niggas, you young punk ass niggas, you crip ass niggas, ain't <laughs> shit. So, <laughs> but, but um, how did the checking session go for somebody coming to the main line in prison in the state of California in your day? Was it a checking session? Nah, nah. Um, when you came in, you go, you go to what we call fish row. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you go, you go, you go kick about 10 days on fish row before you come out. Now, like I say, not nine times. Well, I would say 10 times out of 10, anybody coming in that's banging, you know, they was already banging on the streets. They homies know them and all that. So when you come in, whatever set you from, when your homies find out you there, they go, oh yeah, that's the homie cause he finna hit the main line. Woo, 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 woo. And it's just that as far as checking no they didn't they didn't really have to do that um not a whole not a whole lot um no not not, not period when it when only it went in the down, county you said you said only in the county checking really went on not even not even really in the county because see you got to look you can't do what you want to to somebody else homeboy now if you if anything that any type of uh actions that's going to be taken against you it would have to be from your set and if you, you cool you know you coming in everybody in there you growed up with that's from your set y'all in there they just glad to see you. you know what i'm saying now as time went on if you got into it with somebody and you punked the game now that's a whole different thing now fools looking at you sideways like hold up cuz man you don't get out with that fool or what oh man he, no fool you're gonna get out with him if he punked the game then they go you know what i'm saying they're gonna feed him to the wolves right but, uh, i got you, you. so everybody coming from the county jail knowing each other by the time you hit the prison system you know what I'm saying? You just you just there. Now, I, when I was in the Alabama prison system, I had a I had a um I had a checking ritual. I yeah, did. yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna ask you that, but go Hollywood. You got one for him. So down here, right? Because I know as you said, y'all didn't uh y'all didn't go eat. Everything was done in the cell, right? Okay, what about when it's time to take a motherfucking shower? How that play out? Um Oh, depending on the prison you was in, some prisons had big communal showers, and some prisons just had single man showers. Where okay, say like, say like if it's a single man shower, um, like in let's say Pelican Bay, we had said let's say cells one through ten, they gonna rack they gonna rack one cell, your celly gonna go to one shower, uh, and you gonna go to another shower. When y'all come out locked down, the police gonna in the queue gonna hit the button. Let the next sale out. And they just run it like that all the way through. Now, if they had communal showers, you know what I'm saying? You just you go you go in the shower. <clears throat> Put them state boots on. You know what I'm saying? You ain't coming out with them flip-flops <laughs> on, none of that. You go in the shower with them state boots on. You got your flip-flops rolled in your towel. Nine times out of ten, you got that heat rolled in your towel too. And uh, you know, when you get to the shower, boom, you come up out your state boots, put the flip-flops on, get your shower out the way, and come on in. You had a lot of dudes that shower with their shirts on, me being one, because uh, we were so serious about that iron, we didn't want nobody yoked, what we call yoke checking, trying to see your progress and all that. I'm literally used to shower, soap up and all that with a, with, with a state shirt on, you know? Rinse it okay. off, come on out, boom, 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 like that, you know? Okay, I'm glad you said that. That, that, that that's, that's what we finna ask you. I got, I got another photo for you, hold on. What's going on in this picture right here? Um, that's I was in the cell. I was in Alabama prison, and I was in a prison called St. Clair, and um, right, right there. Yeah, and uh, that's that's a uh, that's a uh, that's in the same prison right there, same prison. Right, right um, there. Yeah, just, just in the cell. Where homies got them cell phones, and you know, come on, cuz take a picture real quick. Just you know, right. snapping pictures. Okay, so explain to the viewers and explain to us. How you ended up in California? How did a nigga from goddamn me, South Central Los Angeles, went through YA, went through the California State Penitentiary, end up in Bareback, Alabama, in the <laughs> goddamn sticks? How the well, hell that know. happened? <laughs> Man, how the I'm, hell that happened? I'm gonna give you the story, homie. Um, couple of partners that I met while I was doing while I was in the pen. You know what I'm saying? We 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 walk in the yard talking. We talk about, yeah, you know, when we get out, man, we're gonna do this and do that, do this and do that. 
um, you know, talking through the cell through the cell doors and lock up together, talking about we get up, we gonna find each other and do this. To me at the time it was just some talking. Um as time went on, I ended up getting out a uh, dude from 60s that I was real cool with. He ended up getting out. And uh, somehow, some way, we got in contact with each other again. And um, he came to the house, man, bless me, looked out for me, the whole hookup. Man, to we finna get this money. Remember what I told you in prison? I'm like, yeah. He say, fool, I'm out here getting it, and you finna be part of the team. I'm like, cuz, cool, that's what's up, bet it up. I'm like, what we got going on? He like, homie, we robbing G, we rob, we hitting these jewelry stores. I'm like, where downtown? He like, no, in a different state. I'm like, a different state. But what it was, you know, California had that three strike law. Right. Every so everybody on the crew had been to prison two or more times. At that time, I think I had been I had been to prison four or five times by this time. Damn. And um, so could nail one of us take no chance on catching the case in california because it was going to be ov for all of us so that's what we started doing we started hitting licks out of town hitting licks out of town so the first hit i you know lick i hit got some money i'm like dang now i ain't never been one of them cats who really cared a whole lot about money my thing was always just gang banging so when i first got my first taste of real money i'm like oh this why these hustler dudes and baller dudes be going crazy and want to keep some money you know what i'm saying <laughs> the money good the money fun you know so boom um, we had went to Miami and had a dry run, had to come back. So we sitting up in the homie house. He had a spot up in the Hollywood Hills. And um, I'm sitting there and we all talking about it. I'm like, well, what's, what's next? So the next thing on the list, because we had a, a piece of paper with a list of stuff. It was an armored car in Florida. So I'm like, man, I don't know about that armored car. Because nine times out of ten, if you hit an armored car, you're going to have to kill somebody or hurt you somebody. you to do some shooting. I, right. I really didn't want to do that. So I'm like, well, what's next on the list? The homie say, man, we got a jewelry store in Alabama. I said, Alabama? I said, man, I said, homie, I said, hold up, cuz. How they got a jewelry store in Alabama? I said, man, they don't even wear shoes. So, and I really, really felt like that. I really, really felt, I'm like, cuz, man, I ain't got a jewelry store, man. They don't even got shoes on out there. So he was like, no, nah, cuz, I'm telling you, man, I've been out there because you know, different places where they done been through and they just write it down for a later date. So we agree, okay, we're going to come out here to Alabama and hit the lick. So we come out here, try to hit the lick. The next morning when we go to hit the lick, we can't even find the jury store that we were supposed to hit. We riding around Birmingham, we looking, we looking, we looking, can't find the jury store. So I get mad. We just had to dry run in Miami. Now we finna have another dry run in Alabama. I'm like, no, cuz, find any jury store. We finna hit something. Man, we come up the freeway. A big old pretty jury store, the most prominent jury store in the whole in the whole state of Alabama called Bromberg's. We went to go hit it. Not knowing. Not oh, knowing. Oh, no. Okay, yeah, you straight. It, it, it seemed like you had got a call or something. You good? Go yeah, on. yeah. Uh, one of the homies called me from prison. But anyway, right. um, not knowing the area that we was in, what. It was real prominent, real rich people, all the lawyers, doctors, all that in Birmingham. It's uh, called Mountain Brook. And um, we didn't know it wasn't no blacks over there. So when we jump out the car to hit the lick, a lady standing across the street, she see it. She knew what time it was. She went in her antique store and hit her alarm, throw the timing completely off. So by the time we was coming out the jewelry store, the police running up on it. Because I know when I come out, uh, my homeboy no good was like, cuz, man, the one time here, I'm like, fool, what? Man, the one time. So when I run to get out the store, the police pulling up to her spot, she hollering, no, across the street, they robbing, they rob, and the police coming. We took everybody scattered. Man, we don't know nothing about Alabama, Birmingham, none of that. We just run it. <clears throat> man, cuz, look, it seemed like I ran for 30 minutes. When I come out the bushes, I'm right back to the jury <laughs> store. About 15 police draw down. I'm like, oh. I just throw my hands up. And hey, you know how they say your life flashed before your eyes. Man, all yeah. I see was back to prison. Here I go, way oh, out here shit. in this country. And it, look, the cold part about it, when we was in the car getting ready, you know, taking stuff out of our pockets. <laughs> I'm telling the homies, look, cuz, let's do this. Let's do it right. I said, I don't want to go to jail out here in these little country and these little sticks and woods, homie. He was like, all right, cuz, we got it. Man, and I'd I be dang if we didn't go to jail out here in them sticks and woods. <laughs> hey, I got to ask you this. How much time did you get on that case? 
they gave me life. Oh, well, guess what? <laughs> you and Hollywood, hey, you and goddamn OG Hollywood know each other. Because OG Hollywood goddamn me robbed jewelry stores for a living, and he got a life sentence. God damn it, y'all goddamn got something in common, god damn it. Hey, that's how OG Hollywood did in Dallas was rob goddamn jewelry stores. That's, and, why, and listen, that's why I'm laughing. Yeah, and, and he got his life sentence at 19. How old was you when you got yours? I'm, I think I was uh, 31 or 32. And, and how much time you do on that sentence? I did 23. Oh, y'all brothers, man. Y'all kin folks, man. You niggas kin each other, man. That nigga did 25. You niggas, you niggas kin each other, man. Y'all prison, y'all prison cousins, Ooh, man. <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all related like a motherfucker, man. Oh, shit, man. Yeah. Yeah, what you got for him, OG? So man, let me ask this. So Alabama, right? Uh, Alabama. Which I know, what, yeah. All right. Go ahead. I said Alabama, which I know is country as fuck from what I can tell. I've been through Alabama, right? Give me the setup of Alabama, man, as far as this side. Right. You turned that heat on. <laughs> We're going to, we're going to, we frying your ass. Tune you in electric chair right now. No, man, I'm, shoot, I'm sitting, I'm sitting in front of this light and she done turned the heat on, cooking me like a Christmas. You see, I'm sweating. <laughs> That's what I did when I stood up, man. I stood up to turn the fan. I'm like, man, what the heat? What? You know, but go but, ahead. No, I said, walk me through that, walk me through that setup in Alabama, man. Somebody <laughs> said, some of my twins. Siamese <laughs> so, so, so twins. <laughs> Like well, Ooh, first yeah. of all, like when you say the setup, what the pr the prison setup? Yeah, man, I, I'm saying what 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 did you notice different about the Alabama from California? Walk me through that shit. Man, a whole lifetime, a whole world. It was it was totally. <laughs> up. I never forget when we got off the plane, we was in the airport. So when we walked through the airport, um, uh, we was going. We was my, as soon as I stepped outside. I walked about three feet, turned around, and ran back in the airport. So the homie, I, I'm, I'm pushing homies out the way. Oh, cub, woo, woo. So I let the door close. They like, man, what's wrong? I, I tell them, I say, man, the air grabbed me. They said, what? <laughs> I said, man, the air sat on me and grabbed me. They said, cause you tripping. But what it was, I was not used to the humidity of the South. And when it, man, when I went out there, man, that heat and that sun set on me, and I thought, I thought it really, I really thought it grabbed me. I'm like, dang. So, you know, that was the first thing. Um, like I say, I, we wasn't here but 14 hours before we got locked up. We got off the plane Tuesday night, <clears throat> went to jail Wednesday morning. 14 hours was gone. But um, I'm in the county jail. It's it was a it was a lot, it was a lot different, man. It was a lot different what I used to. I didn't know I had never seen grits before. I didn't know what a grit was until I came to Alabama. Yeah. What? I didn't know when I first seen it, the very first morning. When they brought the breakfast trays, me and the homie was right there. So when they gave us the tray, I'm looking at it. I see, I see some jelly, but now I see the grits. And so I'm like, dang, cuz man, what is this? So the homie like, man, I don't know. So I'm like, dang, it, it might be jelly. So the homie like, white jelly? I'm like, cuz it might be some mint flavored jelly. So he gonna tell me, man, taste it and see. I'm like, man, I ain't tasting nothing. So I asked the little dude that was sitting there. I'm like, hey, homie, hey, cuz. I say, man, what is this? He goes, them, them grits. I say, they what? Them grits. I said, what the heck is a grit? <laughs> he like, the grits, grits. Yeah. So look, I had to go get on the phone when we came back out. I called mom. I'm like, hey, mama, check this out. I say, man, what is a grit? My mother is originally from Texas. My mother originally from Waco, Texas. So my mom, mom's like, oh, baby, you know, that's a food source, a staple. She said, I never fed it to y'all, but uh, she say in the South, a lot of people eat that. A lot of people eat it. I'm like, dang. I'm like, okay, man, I ain't never ate them, never will. I tried them one time in the prison and throwed up on everybody. I'm like, no, <laughs> this ain't for me. I don't like how they look, how they smell, none of that. Hey, boy, hey, hey. hey. Hey, Hollywood, that nigga disrespectful as a motherfucker, man. Yeah, that nigga disrespecting them goddamn fuck. grits, man. Hey, we, Come on, man. Hey, hey, we fuck with grits down here, man. Hey, we, listen. We, we, we can't, you, grits, listen, man. you can't judge no penitentiary grits on a nigga grandma grits, man. 
That shit don't right. never Chris, add man. up right, man. Okay, look. You can have the penitentiary ones and the grandma. I don't want nothing to do with them. I was raised on cream of wheat. Give me some cream of wheat, homie. <laughs> say, I eat cream say, of wheat all day. Say, man, boy, that nigga crap. That nigga, that nigga hated on the grits like that. Come on, man. We got to have them grits, though, cuz. Man, I fought the police to a standstill in the prison one time and lock up in Alabama because he put my bread in the grits on a Sunday. Now, Sundays in Alabama, you only eat twice. You what? eat real, you eat, yeah, you eat breakfast real late <coughs> about 10 o'clock. Then you don't eat again till dinner. And uh, dinner on a Sunday go always either be baked, baked chicken or fried chicken. But now instead of two biscuits, you get three. Now I'm in lockup in the hole, hungry as a big dog. And the police didn't like me. He gonna come through and put and put my bread in the grits. Now, anybody that was locked up me, they know. If any one of them little bitty white things get on my food, I won't eat it. I won't eat the food, period. I don't, no, uh-uh. It been contaminated. I won't eat it. Hey. Man, listen. This man put my bread, my biscuits in the grits. Man, I went to kicking on that door, letting him know he going to come back and tell me to shut up. Shut up? Now, of course, he can't know me because I'm one of them ones. Look, homie, I ain't going to even front. I slang doodle and piss if you piss me off. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hey, hold up. He, he, he old shit slang Hollywood. So let yeah. me ask you this. Because motherfucker done throw some shit and piss on me because I was the SSI, right? So I got to ask you this. You was a shit slanger, right? Yeah. So did you put your shit in the milk cart and let it get old? Man, I put, look, <laughs> hold up. I look, I would put it, I would put it, I would put it in the milk cart and let it get let it sit up and get real old. Now and sometimes I put it in the shampoo bottle. Look, I squeeze it and I squeeze it and put it in the shampoo bottle with some piss and put it up under the bed, way in the back, and let it sit. So when I want it, I, it's like a like a laser gun. Man, I stick that bottle out that tray slot and each and so, so let me ask this here, Tone Coat. Uh, I, I, I got to know because I ain't never seen that shit get concocted and get put together, right? So, you mean to tell me when you shit, you take your time, load all this shit up in that spray bottle or in that motherfucking milk cart, right? Mm -hmm. What was the average time or date that you let that shit sit up under that bed? Oh man, man! I done had some sit up under there two weeks. Two weeks? Oh yeah, like it ain't nothing. Man, that shit kill a motherfucker, man. Exactly, cause okay, cause now, like in Cali prison system, we'll take our knives and put our knives in it and let it sit. You know, cause it's it's bacterial, it's poison, oh, it's I got poison. You, yeah. Right. So when we hit you, even if we not hitting the main artery, or uh, you know what I'm saying, a main point that 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 bacteria from that feces is gonna fester and mess you up regardless. So let me ask this here. So when you put all that shit together, right? Mm -hmm. And you dash your motherfucker, right? Have you ever seen the reaction of the person that you hit with that shit? What is the reaction that you've seen? Man, the the the, the worst one I've seen. I hit a police bro in the pen one time in Alabama. She talked crazy. I, I, I forget what she was talking. And I seen her on the streets. But anyway, um, she hadn't been working there that long. And um, she talking crazy. I'm like, okay, home girl, you can't know who you're talking to. And she talking crazy. I'm like, okay. I waited. I, I bided my time. I, yeah, I baked her a cake. So she coming through with the nurse doing pill call. So now at the time, I had to get my blood pressure medicine. So no sooner... I got the whole cell real dark where the nurse can't see in. She looking, but she can't see in. And I ain't putting my hand out the tray slot to get the medicine. So she like calling me, calling me. <clears throat> I ain't saying nothing. I, I got I got I got the cup right there waiting. So <clears throat> when she go to look in, the police bro told her, no, don't you do it. Man, this man, this crazy woman stuck her whole face <laughs> in the tray slot. <laughs> Man, I tell you, man, I hit her like a shotgun blast. Bah! Man, it went in her mouth, her nose, 
her eyes, she went to holler and I backed up, fell out on the ground, started shaking, and she quit after that. <laughs> See, I know one thing. That shit so potent, man, because of uh, that motherfucker hit me with one. I worked in SEG. And uh, yeah, we got into it, man, motherfucker. So I got something for you, but I don't know this nigga finna shit me down. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That nigga stole that shit, that motherfucking milk cart hit me, boom. And I lost all breath, everything was gone. I couldn't even think that shit was so motherfucking fucked up. Yeah. So that's why I say, I just want to know me how long that people leave that shit in that corner to sit cause we used to go in them shake themselves down, right? And uh, we go up under that bunk, motherfucker have rows and rows of this shit up under there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you see, I, you see, how I say I put mine, I put mine in the, up under the bed to the back, and I'm like you say, rows and rows of it, homie. It's like <laughs> what we called it was uh, <laughs> we called it prison mates. Cause I tell the police, okay, if you mace me, you know what you're gonna have coming, cause. I, was, I used to cut up, homie. I, they stayed, uh, hit me with the taser, the electric shield, uh, beat me with the sticks, mason me. They had to do all that. I might get, I might be in lockup, get mad, get bored, and just tell the point, hey, man, we finna fight today. And they be like, man, they go cartoony finna cut up. Yeah, you know, yeah, we finna fight. And I tell them, if you mace me, I'm gonna get you back with my, you know, I, that's my prison mace. And they know I'm gonna get them. Man, I'm gonna send them, <laughs> I'm gonna send them home to their wife. Funky. <laughs> Ooh, we in prison, mate. Boy, you a fool. <laughs> Let me see if I. Well, yeah, CEO. Man, is this shit over with? I'm just waiting for this shit to be over with. I don't want nothing to do with this shit, man. No. <laughs> Say, this nigga here is a shit thrower, man. This 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 nigga used to be number one enemy of me. Every time I come through that motherfucking broom, these are the type of niggas I stayed away from. Goddamn right. shit throws niggas a nigga punish a nigga for no reason at all. You know what I'm saying? Hey, have you ever heard of uh you heard of Charles Manson, huh? Yeah. Okay, look, I'm in Pelican Bay shoe program. Charles Manson on the tier with me. Ain't number four sales up, four sales down. I'm in cell one, he in cell four, right by the top of the uh, stairs. So when I first come in, I'm the only black on that tier. So this fool here, he on the, he on the, um, he on, he get on the cell on the bars and call me all type of N-I-G-G-A's all day. <clears throat> all day. I'd be like, man, this fool here. So one homie telling me, one homie, the homie in the cell, he telling me, come man, just ignore that fool. I'm like, yeah, I'm ignore him. So one day I hook him up. So the homie like, come what you, what, what you got? You know, we put the blanket up. So we, you know, sheet, so we take a dump. So I'm over there moving around. I done stood up. I'm, you know, he like, homie, what you over there doing? I'm like, cuz, I'm getting something together for this clown down the tier. <laughs> he like, what you, what, what? I said, we call it, it's called gassing. I'm finna gas him. They call it gassing him. Yeah. He's like, you finna get him? I'm like, yeah. Man, I come out that night to go to shower. He on, he on the cell bars trying to spit and talk crazy. Man, I hit him, boy, look at, I hit him, I hit him with that woo wop wham, and whoa, he hollered like a, like a stuck banshee. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say, well, you a fool, man. What you got, CEO, man? Get on back in here, man. Hey, what, man. I don't you... want nothing to do with this shit, man. My wife better not look at this shit. And y'all up here talking about, man, look at here. <laughs> I don't want nothing. I wasn't on here. Yeah, my camera cut off on y'all ass. I wasn't on here, man. I don't know nothing about no Glock Dukies. No throwing up grits. I ain't look. I ain't got. I ain't got nothing to do with that shit. I, I I ain't got. I ain't got. I ain't got nothing to do with that shit, man. Do not include me with that Ooh, shit, man. man. Right, right. Hey, well, I on. got. I, I got a question for you, Cartoon. Come on, homie. Fourteen hours in Alabama, you get a life sentence. Fourteen hours in, you get a life sentence, man. You do twenty-three years on a life sentence, right? I know it's a culture change. I know it's a culture change because it's Alabama. How did you approach the gang setup? Right? Was all the homies from the same neighborhood? Did y'all stay together when y'all went in there? And let me ask you this: What year was this? And was the gang set real heavy in Alabama by the time you got there? Okay, I got I got popped. I got popped in '96. I got popped. Uh... 
I got popped like four days after Tupac died. Right. And so uh, <clears throat> when I came out here, I had no idea that they was banging. I, I didn't know I didn't know nothing about it. And so when I got popped that night when I was in the county jail, <clears throat> I'm talking to a dude that's from there that was sitting on the bench with me. And I'm asking him, I'm like, man, they bang? He like, huh? I'm like, they got Crips and Bloods. He like, yeah. I'm like, oh, for real? Unbeknownst to me, at that time, like, okay, now I'm in, I'm in Birmingham, Alabama at the time. That's the biggest city they got in Alabama. Right. They was banged. When I tell you they was banged out, homie, they shot me. They was getting their game banged on to the fullest. And I mean, to the point to where when you come into the county jail, when you're getting booked in, the police going to ask you, what are you? You crip blood disciple of vice lord because they had to segregate us. They couldn't. Right. They put the bloods and the vice lords in the tanks together. And they put all the crips and the disciples in the, in the tank together. Now, crips and disciples outnumber the bloods and the vice lords like four, five to one. So they only had one one tank. Uh, each tank held like 22 people. But now you had six other tanks with number of Crips and, uh, and Disciples in there. Man, listen, going out in the morning for sick call, they finna get into it. If the police mess around and made a mistake and left, <coughs> left two doors open, they finna run out on each other and be getting them up. They was banged out. And so uh, it tripped me out. So uh, the biggest sets, the biggest sets is 60s and Hoovers. But now they got a myriad of different sets. They had a right. whole bunch of them. So now when I when I end up getting to prison, man, they they getting down. I ain't gonna even lie, homie. They getting down for their grits and gravy. And it wasn't what I thought. Um, it wasn't as country as I thought. Now, of course, they was a little bit slower on certain things, but um, I ain't gonna even lie, man. I met some dudes so swift out here in Alabama that they will run circles around the average dude from LA. And right. it, it, it just, it wasn't after I, after about the first two years, I start understanding. I'm like, man, these dudes ain't, uh, they ain't what a lot of people think. Cause you know, and I would tell them, I say, man, you hear the word Alabama, people in different States. First thing they gonna think about Martin Luther King and you know, slavery and this and that. <clears throat> but no, homie, it's totally different. It, it, when I tell you totally different, they got everything everybody else got. And ain't nothing slow about them at all. And they dangerous. Man, these little country boys will kill you dirt dog dead. Oh, okay, let, let me ask you a question. You basically broke in uh, the 48 module, 47 module. Um, no, it, Los, no, Angeles, looking... La, La, Los Angeles County. Goddamn right. 1984. Do, no, no, no. Hear? I wasn't there in 84. That's when it opened up. I didn't come to 86. 86. But I'm saying you there at the heart of that shit, right? What was the difference between the Crip module and what Alabama had going on with the separations with the Crips and the blood? I mean, I know both of them were separated, but how was the program in there as it related to the gangs? Because you brought up something very interesting. I'm neighborhood. I got put down with 60s, right? In 93, right? And I knew nothing about the turf or, or, or LA like that, but I I had a natural rivalry for us Crip on Crip with Hoovers. So when you mm -hmm. said 60s and Hoovers, I'm like, damn, that's ironic that that rivalry spread it across states. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you, do, 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 do you see what I'm saying? I, I never ran into an eight tray. So my biggest rivals in prison was Hoovers because I was 60. You see what I'm saying? So just give us how did that program run and what was the difference between the two because you coming out of 48 you understand what i'm saying and you already know you ready to run that same program with these country niggas right uh, uh, and, and, and give us the difference believe it or not i didn't really want to run the same program because by the time you know what i'm saying by the here it is i was in the crypt module back in 86 by the time 96 had come <coughs> i was way more advanced you know i got 10 years under my belt I'm, I'm, I'm mentally, I'm still with all the shenanigans, but it was a little bit different. It was, I was a little bit, I was a little bit more mature, and um, <clears throat> my understanding on certain things was a whole lot better. Now right. it, they don't have crip on crip violence like that in Alabama. You know, if you, it don't make a difference what set you are. 
in Alabama, if you crip, then you 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 family, you part of you part of the hookup. Um, that's how they thing is. Um, it, it's it, and I didn't, I never brought the LA mentality on who's supposed to get along with who and who not. I right. never brought that to Alabama because um, I was about the unity. I was about everybody being together. You know, my thing is if you crip, we under we all up under the same umbrella. I don't give a dang what n- letters and numbers you got on the front. Your last name is Crip. Then let's all get together, and that's how they rocked in Alabama. Um, like, but now, like you say, in Fort Eight Hundred, it was totally different. Um, you up in there, everybody was shoved in there together. Now, after you fight somebody so long, and you in the same module, after a while, you just learn to just get along. You know what I'm saying? Right. You just learn to get along. Now, the fights that would come, like new homies that was coming in, you know what I'm saying? They 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 get them up. They wild. They young. You know they they want to do their thing. So you would see you would still see fights with younger homies coming in. But uh, but other than that, dudes kind of like try to keep the peace and you know what I'm saying try to keep it to an even keel. Uh, okay, take us to this day real quick. You sentenced to life, man. Cartoon is sentenced to life in Alabama. Who who shows up from Los Angeles at the sentencing? Who shows up and you this life sentence is brought down? What is going through the 38 year old mind? cartoon from LA that spent 14 hours in Alabama when that life sentence was handed out to you um but by, by the time by the time I came to Alabama homie and caught that case I had done so much time and I, I man I've been locked up so much because the long the long but before now <clears throat> the longest I ever stayed out of jail was four months usually I was out a month and a half two months and I would go back when I first when I got out back in 82 I stayed two weeks and went back. So going to jail was like old home week for me. So now when I came to Alabama, here it is. We caught, we caught, we caught dead bang. You know what I'm saying? I was the gun man. I, I, when I run out, they see me with the gun. I'm on camera with the gun and the whole hookup. So now here it is. We in there. We fight the case, fight the case. Um, they looked at me as public enemy number one. They was like, okay. We finna throw the book at you. When I went to arraignment, the judge told me, you know what, son? You look like you belong in prison. I'm like, what? But I knew then. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what? I knew then I was in trouble. I was in trouble. So now here it is as, as we fight the case time going on. I found out that my crime partner had turned state on me and my homie. So. Here it is. When they took him out to block with us and moved him, the next day we get letters from our lawyers telling us that uh, you know, your your co-defendant is turned state. We like, what? So then we when we get the transcripts, man, this man had told so much. He told more on himself than what he had told on me and my homie no good. Right. And so we like, dang. But um the uh DA had, the DA had told me from the beginning, life without. You know what I'm saying? Life without. I'm like, oh man. He, he wanted to try to use my California priors, but what he was really using was all the, the, the crazy stuff that my co-defendant who turned state was telling them. So they're like, oh, you a minister to society. And um, I'm fighting, I'm fighting. So now when it, I'm like, okay, I'm caught dead bang. Ain't no way I can weasel up out of this one. And I made my mind up. I'm like, well, bump it then, homie. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never going home. You know, it is what it is. I just, hey, it is, hey this, if this how the cookie crumble, it crumble. I say, but. I'm going to take it all the way to trial just to make them spend some money, bump it. And that's what happened. We went to trial and spent the money. So now when Co- it came... Co-defendant to- got on the stand on your ass? <laughs> no, no, no. He he, he oh, never he got on the stand. Oh, okay. He had, just, uh, he had just made a whole lot of statements and stuff, and he but he never got on the stand. But they was taking right. what he said and was running with it. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> when I went to sentencing... I'm like, okay, well, you know, it's over with. So the judge asked the DA, he said, uh, I forget the DA name, but he said, Mr. Whatever. He said, we still going with life without on him. And he said, uh, no, your honor. So I'm looking, I'm like, what? He said, well, what are we doing? He said, uh, we going with life. Life. <laughs> well, look here. <laughs> I don't think you've never seen a person so glad to get a life sentence. I, life? So at the time, oh, you fuck. could do seven you could do seven years in Alabama and go home off a of life sentence. Oh, okay. 
yeah, so that's what I was looking at. I'm like, okay, I got action. They're getting out again. Because if they didn't hit me with the life without, it was, I'm y'all stupid. I'm through. It's over with. They hit me with the life. I'm thinking I'm going to get a, uh, okay, what they call a setup. They give you how much time you got to do before you go for parole the first time. So I had been in, I had been on the prison yard about six months and I get, I get a, what's called legal mail. So when I go to legal mail, I get my, uh, I get my setup on my life sentence. It was 15. So basically they gave me what's called 15 to life. At first I'm shook. I'm like, dang, <clears throat> I got to do 15, but it started going. When I did the 15, I go up, they shot me down. I go up again. They shot me down five times on the last time. I went on and made it. And Boy, you, that, you and Hollywood cousins. Y'all cousins. That nigga had a life sentence. He had to do 15, and he seen them bitches five or six times before he made parole. You yeah. niggas is kin to each other. <laughs> Straight up. Y'all kin so, each other. So let, me ask you this. Stoves. let me ask you this, though. Right? When the sentence was handed down, right, the lights went off. Cause I know I was fucked up. I ain't gonna lie, I was fucked up. You know what I'm saying? And uh, this this right here is a life lesson for people. You know to think that a motherfucker just really talking about this shit because it's it's all good when it's really not. You know what I'm saying? So I want to add that in there, man. A life sentence is a bad motherfucker. And you ask yourself at the end of all that shit. This is when the lights go off when ain't nobody around. Was it worth it? And I asked myself that shit a thousand times, and I came back with the same answer. Hell no. You know what? To be honest with you, homie, <clears throat> I never, I, I never really tripped on if it was worth it or not. Like I said, the I got institutionalized the first time I ever went to jail. The first time I ever went to juvenile hall, <clears throat> I got what you call institutionalized. Doing time. For some strange reason, it never bothered me. I ain't never sweated it. I ain't never looked at it down. I, I I just really didn't care. I'm just I'm up in here, just doing my thug thizzle, until it's time to you know I would say until the time of these white folks let me go. When I got the life sentence, I knew eventually I was gonna go home again. So I I really the homie to be honest, I really I really wasn't tripping. It didn't it didn't hit me my worst time in prison. Am I back? Yeah, you good. Okay. Somebody was calling. My worst time in prison was 19, I mean, excuse me, was 2007. For some reason, for some reason, man, I just got, man, I gave up. I ain't going to even lie. For some reason in 2007, man, I woke up one day, man, I'm looking around. I'm in a prison called West Jefferson. That's like the bottom of the barrel. That's the last stop in Alabama. That's the most maximum security prison. When you, when you get to, when you make it to West Jefferson, you just there, you there to die. And, um, I, I had been there for some years, but now I woke up one day and I just, it felt like I couldn't take it no more. It's, you know what? I was just like, man, come, you know what, man, I don't even want to do this. And, uh, I ain't going to even lie, man. I called my mama on the phone and I said, mama, I love you. I said, but now I ain't never coming home. She was like, what? I said, mama, I, oh, I had just got set off on parole. That's what it was. I just okay. went up and got set off again. And so uh it kind of I don't, for some reason that time right there broke me. And I told moms, I'm like, um, no, 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 no. Had I went up for parole? No, I hadn't went up for parole yet. I hadn't went up for parole yet. <clears throat> I just got tired because it's 07. I didn't go up for parole the first time for years later. Yeah, but to probably what, probably two thousand. If you went in ninety six, you ain't coming parole to two thousand eleven. No, no, I went up in two thousand twelve. Two thousand twelve, yeah. Yeah, right, that was my 15. first parole. Yeah, that's fifteen years. <laughs> yeah, that was my first parole hearing in two thousand twelve. But in two thousand seven, man, I I just you know what I I never acted like that before. But I told my my, my mom was like, boy, stop tripping. I don't want don't talk like that. You stronger than that. Don't. I'm like, mama, no, man. I just, I'm, I said, mama, they ain't gonna never let me go. Cause I had seen so many dudes going up and not never going home. They wasn't going home. They wasn't letting them go. And I just, for some, it hit me, man. I start tripping, man. I start robbing dudes. Um, <laughs> man, I, I look, 
I start they're just doing all type of wild stuff. Get into it to poke these problems. I, I wanted somebody to kill me because yeah. I wasn't going to kill myself. And I'm robbing them. And I'm sitting up. I, I, I didn't have a knife on me no more. My homies from Cali, like, cuz you tripping too, man. Where you, man? You, man, these dudes go, man, I don't give a dang. Whatever they go do, they go, man, I'm robbing the poker games. I'm robbing the dope, man. Man, I'm taking food from commissary when they come through the door. I'm just doing it all. I'm like, man, whatever you want to do, do it. Ooh, 2000, shit, 2008 hit. I guess God looked, you know, God stepped in and said, man, let me look out for this food. 2008 hit, and he put a woman in my life out of nowhere. Man, I just met this woman out of nowhere. And um, she brought some light back into me, homie. She changed me. I was I started turning into a whole different person. She had she, you know, I picked the Bible up, went to reading it, you know what I'm saying, getting a better understanding. <clears throat> she taught me to move out the blocks and move on the south side where the dorms were. I went to the drug program. Um, I, I just changed to the point to where I was cutting up so see, I was cutting up so bad at one time, they wanted the state. Alabama wanted to kick me out of the state and send me to the feds. They were like, man, we can't do nothing with this fool. He done brought all this California gang banging stuff down here. We have a rise in the prison. Dudes stabbing each other with this crib stuff. We need to get rid of him because I had the South Central mentality. I hadn't calmed down yet. So um, when old girl did that and I started coming down, man, I never forget the warden called me to the office one day. And he like, man, because, you know, they never called me by my real name. They always called me Cartoon. And the warden was telling me, Cartoon, uh, I ain't been hearing nothing about you, man. What's going on? I'm like, what you mean what's going on? Ain't nothing going on, man. I, I, ain't, I ain't doing nothing. He like, that's that's what I'm hearing, that you, you turned a new leaf. So I'm like, I guess, you know, I'm reading this word. I'm listening to what old girl talking about. And she got me on the straight and narrow. And that's and and that's and and I, that's how I end up eventually bouncing back. Changing, yeah. I was gonna ask you that. How did you change? So you pretty much answered that. So we don't have to go go further into that. But you say she came out of nowhere. Now you gotta explain that shit, cartoon. Okay. Ain't no woman came out of goddamn I'm, nowhere to put a You got you got you got you got you to put some straightening on that shit, cartoon. Okay. And I, I'm saying that because you know people want to know how people meet each other and have these connections from jail. You know what I'm saying? So help us out right there. Okay, what happened was um, her son, her son slept on the same tier as me. He was a little young dude. He's from Birmingham. He was a disciple. <clears throat> so I would hear, I didn't really know him. I didn't really talk to him a lot, but I would hear a lot of people talking about him. And I started listening and they was talking about his mama, how bad his mama was. The police was talking about her. Other inmates was talking about her. You in and Hollywood so cousins, man. Hold on. You in you in Hollywood snake ass nick, man. Look. You is Hollywood cousin from South Central. You in Hollywood. Boy, you go go on. I just want to say that. Y'all the same so, niggas. Hey, you hear that nigga so Hollywood, what? man? They, I ain't even know him. They was just talking about his mama. How bad she was. <laughs> right. So now one day. <laughs> my, big, my, my, uh, my biggest Ooh, vice shit. my biggest vice in prison was poker i had a cold gambling habit i had to play poker every day by hook or by crook i had to play that poker i was hooked on it i was gone so this certain day came and the poker game was going to be held in a dude named holiday sale now holiday was selling with the little youngster <clears throat> so i go down to the sale with my two bags of coffee so I can make sure I got me a seat first. When I get in the cell, little dude named Junior, I'm like, shoot, what's up, Junior? He's like, oh, what's up, Tune? Okay. I'm like, where Hollywood? He going across the hallway to get the cars and the chips. I'm like, okay. So I throw the coffee on the bed. I'm like, man, tell him they go my coffee. As I turn to leave, I see his pictures on the wall. So I go to looking at him. I see his mama. So I tell him, I'm like, who is this, your sister? He's like, man, no, that's my mama. So I'm like, oh, okay. But in the back of my mind, I was like, ooh, oh, no, what are they talking about? Her? So I was feeling I wasn't going to go no further. I was just in the lead. The youngster hit me out of nowhere. He said, yeah, man, uh, everybody be around here sweating me about my mama talking about her and this and that. He's like, homie, I ain't finna fool with none of these dudes like that. I'm like, I don't blame you, homie. That's your mama. <laughs> when I went to the lead, look, <laughs> I, look. 
I went to walk off. He said, yeah, man, but uh, somebody like you, I let Ryder. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> so you let me write her? He like, yeah, too, and I'll let you write her. He but now the dude he say, Man, I like how you I like how you carry yourself. I don't like them other dudes, man. Them other dudes do this, that. You ain't like them. I'm like, oh homie, you know, hey, you know, hey, it, it is what it is. So Oh, okay, okay. So he, he put you in a dope. Yeah, he took a letter out of his box and told the address off and gave me the the address. I'm like, okay. I never forget. Look, it was on a Tuesday. Um, I wrote her that night. I'm a bad man with a pen, homie. I've been in prison too long. I'm a bad man with a pen. I, man, me, me and a, a pen and a piece of paper is like getting in a broad ear. And I got, I got that calligraphy writing too. So I get right. at her. About seven, when I write a letter, homie, it's gonna be six, seven pages or better. I don't write nothing under six pages. So I right. get at her. Boom! I put a picture of me in the letter and I sent it to her. Tuesday night, I mail it out. Wednesday, I mean, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, she got the, no, no, Wednesday. She got the letter that Saturday when she came up, but she on the visiting yard to see him. While they on the visiting yard, he telling her about me. <coughs> so he was telling her on the visiting yard. She said, yeah, I ain't messing with nobody right now. I write him out. You know, I'll be his pen pal. Cool. She, when she left the visiting yard, when she went home, my letter was in the mailbox. She get the letter. She tell now she tell me this later on. She said, she said, baby, look, when I open the letter, your picture fell out, but my picture fell out face down. She said she leaned down and picked the picture up and turned around and looked at me. She said she told herself, I'm gonna marry this man right here. That was she tell me. She said, I'm gonna hey, marry him. Hey. And from there on, we never looked back. Listen, you you better than Hollywood. Hollywood would have beat the nigga at the game, right? Saw the pictures, know the nigga on, and then start explaining to the nigga, look, man, I'm going to show you how to do this game because you don't know how to do it. Yeah, Hollywood would have went to teaching the nigga how to play poker, all that shit, only to get the number and Ooh. have the nigga like, yeah, man, you like my little brother, man, like my little, and that is. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I ain't going to hey. lie. I done, hey. put that type, I done put that type game down too, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's Hollywood all day. He would have, he all he would have said, "Oh, well, now nah, I'm finna get this. I'm finna get that." And, but he gonna beat him in the game. He gotta put him in the hole first. You hear what I'm saying? Say, yeah, he would have. He look all that talking about the nigga. I'm laughing. All that talking about it. Yeah, he gonna go put the little nigga in the hole, and all that shit will come out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, hey, hey, man, listen. Is that your wife today? No, 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 no. No, my wife today. I had. I had to go all the way back to LA and get her. Yeah, <laughs> bring okay. her back out here. Okay, okay. I'm just I'm just asking. So, but did you get out and have relations with the lady? One time. One time. We okay. Up, we got married, stayed married about uh maybe about eight years. And um eight, nine years, then you know, you know, every everything has has its time. It ran its course. Right. I ended up getting a divorce. I told her I want a divorce. She went her way, I went mine. Right. So when I got out. You know, you know how we are, man. I, I get out. I'm in a halfway house. Um, about my second or third day out, I went looking for her on Facebook and found her. Right. And told her like, look, yeah, look, I'm out. So you know, she was like, oh, for real? Okay, boo, boo, boo. Cause the only thing on my mind, man, this heifer was so bad. Ain't no way in the world I'm finna let her get away without tagging it at least once. Yeah. <laughs> I got. And hey, that's man. what happened. I I tagged. Well, look, she came. She stayed in Huntsville, Alabama at the time. She came back down to Birmingham. I tagged her, and we realized, okay, look, we we just gonna be cool. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna right. try to hook up and do all this. Boom, we did what we did because she was curious. I was curious. Yeah. She went her way. I went mine. I wanna, hey, I wanna put my quarter in that ride, man. I got my quarter. Let me put my quarter in that ride. You know what I'm saying? What what what, what you got, OG Hollywood, man? Y'all y'all similar like a motherfucker. What 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 you got? So man, let me ask this here, right? After going through all that situation you went through, right? Cause you know, you know, sometimes people think that uh, you know, we don't get shit from that. You know what I'm saying? And we're gonna be the same people all the time. You know what I'm saying? And like I tell people, it's all right to look back on all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because that and what you went through made to who you are today. You feel what I'm saying? So uh I just wanna ask you, man, uh 
that whole ride, the Alabama ride, the life sentence, and all that shit, you know, bunched up together, right? Uh, what did you get from that? What What did it do for you up until this point? Um, I, it, I I wouldn't I don't know if it was just me because I got older or it was kind of like because of what I went because I really I really I didn't really go through no whole lot of harrowing experiences while I was in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I coached stabbing cases, uh, fights, riots, and all that. But um, it was like old home week for me because I you know I come from the Cali system and this is what we do just you know just to go to breakfast anyway. So. I didn't really pay no attention to that. Um, my it opened my eyes up to the Lord when I start when I when I picked that Bible up and start reading and and had and got a better understanding with with God. <clears throat> that's when my real change start coming about. That's when I really start looking at life a little bit different and knowing in my mind, you know, it's something else to do. Um, by the time I got out, the, the same day I got out of prison was the same day my mother went into the hospital. And, um, you know, she didn't come back out. She ended up passing away. And um, when I first got out, I shot back to L.A. to go see her because she was just holding on for me. You know what I'm saying? She had to, Every time I got shut, set out, she would tell me, boy, you're going to make me live to be a honey. Because she, she had been sick, but she had made it her mind up that she was not going to die. She wasn't going nowhere until her son got out of prison. I'm her only son. So the same day when I when I got out, she went in the hospital. And when I made it back to L.A., made it to the hospital, you know, I'm talking to her like, Mama, get up out that bed. Come on. She's like, baby, I'm tired. I can't go no further. I'm just glad you out. She said, Mama, finna go home. She said, I just asked one thing, one thing of you. I'm like, Mama, what's up? She said, baby, give yourself a chance. You ain't had no chance. You've been in jail all your life. She said, don't come back to L.A. What? She said, I don't care what state, what place you go to. She said, baby, but please. Make mama promise you won't come back and live in L.A. And I made her that promise, homie. I made her that I made her that promise. And a lot of people are like, man, why you? Using... That's one of the main reasons why I'm still in Alabama because of the promise I made her. But um, Alabama been good to me, homie. You know, as far as the job situations, um, I ain't, you know I don't have to go through. I ain't got to worry about what color I got on. I ain't got to worry about what store gas station I'm going to. Um, I, you know, it's a lot of people that I bump into out here that was in prison with me, so they know they know my get out. So they, you know them. They say, "Man, big tool, man, how long you been out, homie?" I'm like, you know. So you know, and it's, <clears throat> I like it. I like it out here. I like it a lot. Right. Okay. Wood. We gonna move into the section, man. Um. So you. Hey, out? look. Hold on. All right. Uh, man, I hate, man, I hate, I hate to bust the bubble, homie. <clears throat> but I gotta pick my homeboy up and take him. To the uh to the uh airport at 10 30 it's 9 52 now so i gotta get to his house so i'm gonna have i'm gonna have to cut this one short on me go on do your thing well, we good man listen we appreciate you man anything you want to say before you leave out man oh man uh man i man i appreciate y'all having me man uh thank you for letting me come on the panel any other time you want me to come on homie i will come on with no with no hesitation man you know what i'm saying and like what a lot of people be be you know they I see in the comments in my comments or other stuff when they ask about how dudes feel about the other gangs in different states, you are gonna have a very few that's gonna like have something negative to say about it, but they don't understand. I go to L I go back to L A all the time. I talk to my homies all the time, and I know how they feel. We respect it and we love it. We because it's like a pride thing. When you see you can look up in Texas, St. Louis was uh mississippi or wherever you at and see that the brand that you are a part of has spread it out there man it's a pride thing we wear it on our shoulder we love it man we you know we, we respect texas get out we respect everybody get out man so don't let nobody get on here and tell you oh man we ain't tripping on them they way out there no because i ain't gonna even lie to you homie the banging in la that got so watered down they banging harder in other states than they bang in la nowadays right Pre appreciate your homie man be safe man Okay. Appreciate you coming by, Tone, sharing that real, man. That's real spill, man. That's All right. right. And, and, and we'll tap back in with you. Hey, let my little partner say what's up. What, 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 <laughs> what, 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 hey, hey what, 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 what's your partner name? Because OG Hollywood got a dog, too. You niggas cousins, <laughs> man. You niggas cousins. You niggas cousins, man. Appreciate you, Tone. All right, hey, man. man.
That's hey, that's Mr. Wiggles, man. <laughs> Ain't no doubt. Wiggle when you walk, man. Go on, don't pick that ball up, man. <laughs> Till next time, y'all. All right. Y'all know Yo. I got to say. Y'all know I got to say this, man. You can't get this nowhere else, man. Real life people, real life stuff. You can only get that here at the Ferguson Chronicle, where we keep it one ten all the way across the board, man. And that's just what we do, man. It's what we do in this day room, man. Hey, man. Yeah, you gotta keep that doodle Glock doodle shit off of here, man. I I gotta keep that shit out. All, 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 all I gotta say is this, man. You know what? Uh, I've been on the end of that shit, man, and, and that shit was nice, man. That shit take the breath out of you, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he 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 admitted it himself when he threw it on the motherfucker and knocked him out. So <laughs> I I <laughs> so. I know how the shit make you feel it now. I ain't never conjured none of the shit up and throw it on nobody, but I've been on the back end of that shit and got it thrown on me and that shit buckled my knees, man. You hey, now, 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 listen, man. You know I know about it, but some of that shit I'm trying to forget about Hollywood. Some of that shit I don't want nothing to do with, man. Listen. Okay, but listen what I'm telling you. I couldn't <laughs> do nothing but acknowledging what he said and that shit brought flashbacks to me when a nigga say he kept that shit lined up under the bunk. Nigga kept that shit up under like ammunition for a nigga ass. He was coming up that bullshit. He gonna hit you with it hard, man. But uh, anyway, man, this is what we do at the Ferguson Chronicle, man. Uh, uh, I want to say this, man. It's a, it's it's a life. It's it's a life lesson learning, man. I mean, we make jokes and all that shit, man. But at the end of the day, uh. Tune did 22, I did 25, man. That shit is expensive pain, man. So if a motherfucker on the outside looking in, man, you don't want to do this. Me and, me and Tune, everything that you don't want to be. And that's facts. We can laugh about it now because we're on this side of the fence, man. Uh, it is what it is, man. But, you know, if you ain't never had no shit thrown on you, I advise not to go down there. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't goddamn take that trip. Nah, man, that was that was that was a um that was a dope interview, man. You know, we're gonna bring some more homies on here, man. Some more um people from here and from out of town. As a matter of fact, real quick before we get out of here, man, I'ma drop the link real quick because one homie had been asking for the goddamn link, right? Yeah, I think that was, I, I, I think that was CC, man, straight out of LA, man. Straight out of LA? Yeah. CC, man, if you're still around, come on in, CC. Yeah, I just dropped a link. Or oh, if you want to call into the show, I'm going to put the number in the chat, man. You can call up, tell us what y'all think about the show, man. I just dropped a link, and I'm finna drop the phone number, man. You can call into the show. Yeah, I think that was CC, man, straight out of company. That was him, man. And, uh... Yeah, man, you know, we want to hear from the people, man. The people that gave us their time, man. So, hey, we ain't like them other niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? We appreciate y'all being here. We appreciate y'all spending y'all time with us, and, and we like to hear y'all input. I just dropped a number in the chat. You could call that number, or you could click that link and come on up, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Tell, tell us what you think about the show, how you doing it. Don't be scared to come to the day room. You ain't got to have to be in the prison. To be able to step in the day room, man. The day room open for any and everybody, man. Yeah, man. Y'all show up, man. If y'all want to come to the day room, man, and uh, just sit down and chat, man. Because you know it's a bunch of motherfuckers that's free, but they in prison in their own world. So don't act like you're not. Right. You Factuals, know? man. But nah, it that, is that, what that, it that, is, that, man. That, that was a good one, man. I appreciate Tune coming in, giving his story. And we're going to get some more of the L.A. homies on here. You know what I'm saying? And there's different people from around the world, around the, not not the world, but around the um, nation to be able to tell a story, man, and give us their side of the pain. As you say, man, this pain is very expensive, man. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no doubt. Yeah, we able to sit here and package it and present it to y'all in a manner in, in which it is, but it is pain, man, and it, it is real horrible. That's why I got off of here. When they start talking about that Dookie shit, <laughs> I'm out, man. Yeah, y'all. Y'all going a little bit too deep in the goddamn me. I'm gone, man. I got to I gotta get out of this motherfucker, man. I got to duck off right here, man. Hold yeah, on, man. man. Hold on, man. We got to call her, man. Yo, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. What's yeah, I'm checking in from Dallas, man. That was a great interview. 
Okay. Like the, way you brothers, like the way you brothers don't glorify that prison and then y'all just spinning y'all stories of it, man. Yeah. And making it make sense. Yeah, facts, man. We just trying to tell the stories, man. And again, you got to laugh to keep from, from crying, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, y'all yeah. y'all, y'all damn sure don't want to watch us cry on this bitch for an hour. Yeah, now, at least y'all benefited from that film, since y'all, y'all figured something out, man. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that. That's another thing, man. You know, it's a it's a stigma about people that have been to prison that, that they can't get right. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, some, it's, exactly. some, it's some people online that represent the side of niggas that went to jail that can't get right. So we just want to show the other side. We the niggas that got yeah, right. Man. Can you hear me? You faded out. You faded out. I can hear you now. Yeah, I say we just the ones that got right, man. We want to be able to show that. Yeah, man. I like what you brothers doing, man. I was just checking in, man. All right. Appreciate that, homie. Much love. Yes. yes. But, uh, what's up, show you love? See, you still playing them games, huh? Still yeah. playing them games. Like a motherfucker. I'm trying to see, man. I'm trying to hand out some free world ass whoopings. I'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> I got time today. Man, you a motherfucker, man. <laughs> Say, but you a fool. I got time today. Hey, 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 hey Carla. Man, you a motherfucker, man. Say, hey, 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 Carla, you got to turn down your shit in the back, man. You got us turned up too loud. You got to turn that shit down. I'm finna bring you back up, but turn that shit down. Show your love is a troll, y'all. That show your love, Lil Travis out of Houston. I be telling my <laughs> chat boy. about that nigga. That's that nigga boy, a man. troll. Show your love, man. Show your love, say he getting us mad whooped on this game. Hey, talk, talk to us, homie. What up? What up? Talk to us. Hello? What's going down? Oh, that's Blue Hands. What's up, Blue Hands? What's up, Hank? Hello? What's up? Can you hear us? Yeah, I hear you, Crip, the nice CEO, Hockney, and OG Hollywood. What's going down? I see y'all in the hood where it's all good, man. This blue hand checking in, man. I missed the show, man, but I already know y'all think y'all been shit, man. Oh, yeah, man. You know we ran the play, man. We ran it how it went. Yeah, I ain't. I missed it because, you know, I fuck with that guy cartoon, man. Yeah, I ain't kept, man. Oh yeah, he was always tap. He was all the way tapped in, man. You know what I'm saying? He kept it. He yeah. kept it one thousand. Yeah, man. Yeah, I was just tapping in. I seen y'all was in the in the middle of the conclusion of the goddamn day room. I caught the dogs so they rolled. You did. Yeah, definitely, man. I, we appreciate you tapping in, homie. I know you're gonna get it on the playback. Appreciate you. For so for so. All right, all right, man. Yeah, man, Blue Hands is back online, man. If y'all don't know, he back online. That's King Shoe, real from the trail. Y'all got to go by his page and check that out, man. So, salute to everybody that uh, watched the show this week, last week. This is our second week. Y'all see the duo, OG um, Hollywood, uh, Crip Knight, CEO Hockley in the building, and this is what we bringing, man. We going to keep bringing this to y'all. Some week we going to have guests. Some week we not going to have guests. You know, because we got enough stories and enough discussion to be able to tell y'all some of the real actual factuals about making that transition of being a criminal to being a grown man. You know what I'm saying? And it's all about the levels of maturity to it, man. And with that, man, hey, that's that's it, Hollywood, man. I'm good. You got something else you want to share? You know what I always say, man? The most dangerous man is the man with a made up mind, man, whether it's negative or whether it's positive, man. Like I said, man, uh. Remember to always keep your head on the swivel, man, and let's try to be a better person than you were the day before, man, and that's all that counts, man. And never, ever let your past define your future, man. As you can see, we've both been incarcerated, and it was three incarcerated people. However, we're here, man, and we ain't going nowhere. Bringing it 110 all the way across the board, man, the Ferguson Chronicle. You can't get that nowhere else. And I'm hey, not here. Hey, then we forgot. Look at that gear, man. Look at oh, that no kill, man. Look, look, look how hard that Savage Drive is, man. So no before we get out of here, man, 
You got to goddamn tell them about that. Say, hold on, hold on, wait. Here we go right here. Let's do it, man. This episode is sponsored by... Yo, this your boy CEO Hockley. Real quick, man, today's episode is being sponsored by OGHollywoodSpeaks.com. Yes, that's right. OGHollywoodSpeaks.com has this fly gear, man. Savage Drive, man. He has his very fly gear, man. He's a former prisoner that changed his life, did 25 years after receiving a life sentence, got home, and he been home 10 years, man. He's been out. He's been free 10 years. He has his own clothing line called Savage Drive. It represents the kind of drive you need to have to make it to the top, the kind of drive you need to have to stay free, right? And as we talk about this prison topic, I want to highlight and um, show and give respects to those that have been to prison and that are doing the right things in today's society. Everybody go to OGHollywoodSpeech.com and get that savage drive. If you got the drive it takes to be successful, man, support him. Also, you can follow him on YouTube. You can follow him on all social medias at OGHollywoodSpeech.com. We appreciate the support here at CEO Talk, and we also like to support other black people doing something positive, man. Savage Drive, that is the clothing line. Get yours today. Salute. Facts, man. And with that being said, man, guess what? We out. <laughs>